that as the rain from heaven is able to water a variety of plants and vegetation, we know your word is also able to bring forth life out of a variety of situations. And so God, we thank you for your word, for the privilege of proclaiming your word, and for the honor of serving you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Good morning, saints of God. Amen. Uh, we're so thankful to God for your presence here on today. And I'm going to ask that you'll join me in the Gospel of St. Luke, chapter 17. The Gospel of St. Luke, chapter 17, verses um, 11 through 19. The Gospel of St. Luke, chapter 17. And Again, for our reading, verses 11 <coughs> through 19. Um, I read primarily from the American Standard Version of the Bible, um, and it reads as follows. While he was on the way to Jerusalem, he was passing between Samaria and Galilee. As he entered the village, ten leprous men who stood at a distance met him, and they raised their voices saying, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. And when he saw them, he said to them, Go and show yourselves to the priest. And as they were going, they were cleansed. Now one of them, when he saw that he had been healed, turned back, glorifying God with a loud voice. He fell on his face at his feet, giving thanks to him, and he was a Samaritan. Then Jesus answered and said, Were there not ten cleansed, but nine, where are they? Was no one found who returned to give glory to God except this foreigner? And he said to him, Stand up, go, your faith has made you well. As you are seated today, I want to talk uh, from this thought. Going out of your way not to say thank you. Going out of your way not to say thank you. Abraham Lincoln once said that ingratitude was one of the greatest sins. And my friends, there are times when many of us <clears throat> will go out of our way simply not to show gratitude. There are some times when saying thank you becomes extremely hard. My brothers and sisters, one of the distinctive features of the ministry of Jesus was that he cleansed lepers. There were many faith or so-called faith healers during that particular time who had proclaimed or promoted that they could perform a variety of miracles. The fact is, there was only one who it had been rumored who could literally heal those who were leprous. It's very interesting to note that those who were deaf, those who could not hear, those who may have had a bleeding situation, uh, they, they were not persons who were social outcasts. In other words, they were still part of society even though they had something that was ailing them. But unique to those who had leprosy is they faced what is called a social stigma. Listen, in 2016, George Barner, even today, did a survey of Christians and discovered that 90% of those who receive God's benefits are wanting in gratitude. 90% of those who are blessed of God and call themselves Christians find it difficult to express gratitude to God. Uh, that is arresting to me because if in 2016, 90% of Christians have a hard time saying thank you to God uh, when he delivers them from a hospital situation. If 90% of Christians have a hard time opening their mouths and praising God when he simply wakes them up in the morning. 
I find that we've not really developed or grown very much since the first century. Amen. Because this story says that 9 out of 10, 90%, found it very difficult to thank God for what God had done. You'll notice in this text that there were 10 individuals. And these 10 persons kept together literally in a band. It's very interesting that misfortune can make some very strange bedfellows. You'll find folk that ordinarily won't speak to one another. Folk that ordinarily you think don't like one another. But when they find themselves going through a trial or a tribulation, misfortune can bring folk together. As a matter of fact, illness will make some folk think of God who have never thought of God before. You'll often discover folk that you didn't never know belonged to the church. Whenever they're in the hospital, you'll get a call saying, come pray for me. There are some folk who never think of God until something is wrong in their life. Now, now, if you notice the geography of Israel, uh, the text tells us, my brothers and sisters, in verse 11, that while Jesus was on his way to Jerusalem, he was passing between Samaria and Galilee. Now, notice, as you look at the nation of Israel from north to south, uh, Galilee is directly north. And in order to get to Jerusalem, which is in Judea, if you go directly south, you've got to pass through Samaria. But the Jews, not wanting to deal with the Samaritans, would go all the way out of their way in order not to go through Samaria to get to Jerusalem. In other words, the most direct route was from the north straight south. But they would not do that. They would go to the east, across the River Jordan, come down south, and then over literally to Jerusalem in order to not deal with the Samaritans. Now, they would be going to Jerusalem because they were on their way to worship. They were on their way to church. And it's very interesting how we as Christians sometimes, we can go out of our way not to do ministry on our way to church. Matter of fact, we are dressed up. We're ready to go to church. We, we don't want to do ministry. Can, can I give you a case in point? Can I, can I call my own self out? I go to Quick Trip quite often. And when I go to the Quick Trip, before I get gas, the first thing I do is I look at both doors. And I try to see where the folk are who might ask me for something. Somebody talk to me. And wherever they are, I go out of my way to go through the other door. I'm just picking on me, not y'all. But the Lord has a way of catching you on your way out. When you are trying not to help folks, somebody talk to me here today, who might need some help. So the Jews were on their way to church and they went out of the way not to deal with some folk. But Jesus made sure that he literally went through Samaria. Now the Bible says as Jesus is going through Samaria, he entered a village, the village is not named, and the Bible says there were 10 leprous individuals who stood at a distance. Now, I want you to know something about these 10 leprous individuals because I said that illness will make strange bedfellows. Listen, nine of them were Jews. One of them was a Samaritan. Ordinarily, Jews would have nothing to do with Samaritans. But these nine Jews, were cast out of the Jewish fellowship because they had leprosy. Now all of a sudden, they had to get along with the Samaritans. So they found themselves, these nine Jews, with this one Samaritan. Don't forget this. And as literally they are together, now you need to understand something about Luke. Luke is a physician. But Luke helps to remind us that Jesus literally is the great physician. And Luke, whenever he writes stories about the miracles and healings of Jesus, Luke will be very descriptive because of his medical background of not only the condition, but also
also the healing. Jesus, the Jews in Galilee and their journeys would to keep the Passover, going to Jerusalem would con constantly, as I said, take a longer route. You'll notice in John chapter 4 when Jesus met the woman at the well, Jesus went that direct route because he did not want to avoid the people of Samaria. But notice the Jews that went out of their way in order not to deal with the Samaritans dealt with discomfort, they dealt with danger, and they added miles to their trip. The Bible says there met him ten men, nine Jews and one Samaritan. What we notice, my brothers and sisters, first of all, is that common ministry, misery, has drawn these poor outcasts together. Leprosy in the Bible was an outward symbol of sin, denoting their estrangement and their separation from God. Literally, they could not go in the temple. They could not worship. They were literally separated from God. And so the physical disease of leprosy was symbolic of the spiritual disease of being separated from God. But what we notice even with our spiritual disease, and this is where many of us have the spirit of ingratitude, we need to understand even with our spiritual disease of sin, we don't go looking for God. Amen. God comes looking for us. Amen. And so as everybody else was going out of their way, Jesus went out of his way to find those who were literally separated from God. Amen. But listen, their deep sense of misery uh, was in them, but yet their deep sense of misery was not without hope. Luke is descriptive of their condition and also their healing. Now notice, the Bible says that when the ten saw Jesus, they cried out together with a loud voice. Don't miss this. The reason why they cried out together with a loud voice, Luke, the physician, would want us to understand that a symptom of being leprous is a weakening of your vocal cords. So the only way they could cry out was to cry out together. If one had cried out on his own, his voice would have been too weak to get the attention of Jesus. So, so they had to bring together their weakened voices and cry out to God for mercy. Listen, a whole lot of us don't ever want to pray until we go going through something. We don't ever want to call out to God for somebody else. We don't ever want to call out to God for what somebody else is going through. But when we find ourselves going through what somebody else is going through, we want to unify ourselves in prayer and call out to God. Total failure of voice is one of the symptoms of the disease of leprosy. And so it was not for nothing that Luke the physician, guided by the Holy Spirit, tells us that those who were restored to health, it says, uh, uh, that, that they cried out with a loud voice. Now, I'm going to jump forward and come back. Because notice it says they were so weak in voice, they had to cry out together. But when the one was healed, he cried out by himself with a loud voice. Somebody will get that on the way home. Before they were healed, the ten voices were too weak to cry out. But when the one was healed, he realized, wait a minute, I can cry out all by myself. I've been healed. I don't need a speech therapist. I don't need no rehabilitation. I don't need no of a nine. Listen, whole lot of us, we sit in church, and God has been good to us. But we too worried about who's next. Who's next to us to cry out to God. But we notice something else, my brothers and sisters, in this text. The Bible says that the Lord varied his treatment according to the needs of his patients. He varied his treatment according to the needs of his patients. When you go to Matthew chapter 8, verses 1 through 4, you'll see there was a man in Matthew 8, 1 through 4 that had leprosy. 
The man in Matthew 8, 1 through 4, the Bible says that Jesus cleansed him and then said, go show yourself to the priest. Back up. Matthew 8, 1 through 4. Jesus told the man, he said, you are cleansed. Go show yourself to the priest. Here, Jesus says, go show yourself to the priest. And as they are on their way, they are cleansed. Jesus varies his healing according to the needs of the patient. In Matthew 8, 1 through 4, I'm going to say it again. He told the man, you are healed. Go show yourself to the priest. In this text, he says, wait a minute. Go show yourself to the priest first. As they are going, they are healed. Jesus noticed there is a difference in the level of faith between the leper in Matthew 8 and the ten lepers in Luke 17. The man in Matthew 8 had a greater level of faith. So Jesus said, you're healed. I know your faith is strong. Go show yourself to the priest. He said, I know your level of faith in Matthew chapter 8. You're healed. Go show yourself to the priest. I know you're not going to thank the priest because you know the priest didn't heal you. A lot of folks spending their tithe money, handkerchiefs, staying up late at night, watching church service. You'll watch somebody at midnight and can't get here at 11 o'clock. Who has told you they can heal you? Jesus said to the man in Matthew 8, listen, you are healed. Because I know you know your faith is not in man. In, in, in Luke 17, he tells them, go show yourself to the priest. Now when those ten left, they thought Jesus was saying, when you get to the priest, the priest is going to heal you. So while they were on their way, before they got to the priest, before this miraculous handkerchief and this oil and all this other kind of stuff, all of a sudden, they got healed before they got to the priest. Listen, the priest simply acknowledged a cure, did not bring the cure. Listen, I can't heal anybody. But when the Lord heals you, I can say the Lord has made you well. You ought to thank the Lord. So, 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 so the Lord says here, they had no signs of restoration at all. But in their faith, they showed prompt obedience. This intimated the weak beginnings of faith. And it only matured in one of them. That one was healed and he showed the maturation of his faith by going back to thank the Lord. There was no faith healer. There are no faith healers. Only God can heal. We are faith proclaimers. Somebody talk to me in this place today. And so, my brothers and sisters, we've got to resist this strange temptation to ingratitude. Because the nine were mistaken as to who and how they would be healed. The Bible says, as they were on their journey, they were healed. Now notice something. We talk about how you go out of your way not to say thank you. The Lord said, go your way. They had traveled a little ways. <laughs> and they had traveled so far, as they got healed, they looked back and said, you know what, it's too far for us to go back. And say thank you. Let me stop. He said, go, show yourself to the priest. They went. They had journeyed a great distance. The Lord did something for them, and they said, you know what, it's too far for us to go back and say thank you. A whole lot of folk have bargained with God and said, God, if you get me out of this hospital, I'll be in Sunday school. I'll start tithing. I'll be in church at 9.30. Somebody talk to me here today. But as soon as the Lord restores you, you say, it's too early in the morning for me to go to First Baptist North Tulsa. Somebody pray with me in this place today. The Lord that brought you up and you don't even want to tell the Lord. Thank you. It says when, 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 when the one saw that he was healed, he turned back 
and he went to the Lord. Now, we notice also that Jesus was a marvel at the greatness of their ingratitude. Listen, he was so marvel. You, you remember the story of Joseph? You know, when folk are in trouble, they can become friends. And when Joseph was in trouble, the butler and the baker wanted to be his friend in prison. And Joseph said, look, when we get out of this, don't y'all forget me. But guess what? <laughs> When one of them got out, they forgot him. Somebody pray with me here today. And the fact of the matter is, these nine Jews would have never had anything to do with the Samaritan. But as soon as they got healed, they went back to their same old religious way. See, a whole lot of folk, they are religious, but they don't have a relationship. And these religious Jews, as soon as they got healed, they didn't need the Samaritan anymore. Can I drop something political in your lap? There are a whole lot of folk that need our votes. But as soon as they get our vote and get inaugurated, they forget all about our part of town. I dropped that one in there for free. Somebody talk to me here today. Somebody talk to me in this place today. The Jews they had because they were cast out had to associate with a Samaritan. But as soon as the social stigma was gone, they forgot about the Samaritan. But notice the Samaritan, unlike the religious Jews, who did not like Jesus anyway, who was one of them, went back to Jesus and said, Lord, Thank you. Bernard of Clairvoy, Bernard of Clairvoy says this and I quote, they are importunate or desperate to receive, restless until they receive, and ungrateful when they receive. We are desperate to receive, restless until we receive, and some ungrateful folk when we receive. That's what we find in this text, that there are folk who will call out to God for help. Restless till we get here, and as soon as we get here, we don't want to thank the Lord. John Calvin says that, that we want God in our hunger, and when our hunger gives birth to faith, and we get full, our faith becomes dead. We have faith when we are wanting and when we are in hunger. But as soon as the Lord satisfies our needs, we don't need the Lord anymore at all. Can I share one more thing with you? Many of us, just like those nine lepers, we look upon things pleasurable as a birthright. We think comforts and luxuries are an entitlement. And because we think comforts and luxuries are an entitlement, we don't say thank you. How many of y'all got kids and grandkids? They just think food's supposed to be in the refrigerator. The light's just supposed to be on. The bed's just supposed to be clean. Somebody pray, the water's just supposed to run. Comfort and luxuries are somehow an entitlement. But they're not an entitlement. Somebody got to work for it. And the fact of the matter is, whoever worked for it ought to be told thank you. The Lord is reminding us in this text that if the Lord has ever done anything for you, you ought to say thank you. Your deliverance is not an entitlement. Your comforts and your luxuries are not an entitlement. Your heart beating, your blood flowing, you waking up this morning is not an entitlement. You ought to thank the Lord each and every day for what the Lord literally does for you. And so can I lay out a theological framework for First Sunday? We have the word, we have baptism, and we have the Lord's Supper. These ten persons responded to the word, 
not the priest or the gratitude. They responded to the word. And when they responded to the word, they were cleansed. When their response to the word cleansed them, he said, go show yourself to the priest. Now, when they went to the priest, we would see according to Naaman that the priest would say, dip yourself in the water. The word cleansed. The priest simply dipped Naaman in the water. Symbolic of the word cleansing. I thought y'all read y'all Bibles. Let me say that again. The word or response to the word cleansed. They went to the priest. The priest said, yes, you are cleansed. I'm going to dip you in the water to celebrate that the word cleansed you. The word cleansed you. I dip you in the water and I go say thank you. That means don't leave before saying thank you. The Lord's Supper is our gratitude for the grace of God. The word cleanses. The priest acknowledges your cleansing by dipping you in the water. The Lord simply says, acknowledge your gratitude by celebrating the Lord's Supper. The word baptism. Lord, Lord, have mercy today. The fact of the matter is, God has brought us from a mighty long way. His word cleansed us. We celebrate our cleansing by being dipped in the water. And we remind ourselves of the grace of God every first Sunday by partaking of the table. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me whiter than snow. It was nothing, nothing, nothing but the blood of Jesus. Listen, the Bible says this one foreigner came back and thanked the Lord. And when he came back and thanked the Lord, he received a greater blessing. A lot of people, as I close, they only want the temporal blessing. Lord, heal me. Lord, make me well. Lord, pay my bill. But there's a greater blessing. Because the Bible says, look, they were healed while they were on their way. That's the lesser blessing. The greater blessing was that when he came back and thanked Jesus, Jesus said, go your way, your faith has made you whole. There's a difference between being healed and whole. Amen. A whole lot of folk come to the Lord because they want to be healed, but they don't want to be whole. Amen. They want their physical situation dealt with, but their soul is bound for hell. Amen. The Lord said, listen, it does no good for you to be perfectly healthy and to break hell wide open. Amen. A whole lot of us, we pray and ask God. We put down our pride when we are sick. We put down our pride when we need our bills paid. But we will not put down our pride when it comes to our sin. The fact of the matter is, you can be perfectly healed, but not be whole. you got to want to be whole and not just healed. I'd rather be blind and sick than bust hell wide open. Because Jesus died. Don't worry about the one who can destroy the body. Right. But you need to worry about the soul. Yeah. And so as we open the doors of the church, I'm done. I extend this invitation. As you make, as the deacons make their way and ministers and I stand and as you stand. This is not an invitation for healing. This is an invitation to be made whole. If your soul is not resting in the safety of Christ's eternal rest. You need more than healing, you need wholeness. 
and that wholeness comes from the cross. Listen, St. John can heal you. St. Francis can heal you. Hospitals can heal you. But only Jesus can make you whole. And so we preach not for folk to be healed. We preach for folk to be whole. Because if we live long enough, we're going to have something physically that needs to be healed. And the Lord does not promise that everything is going to be healed. But he does promise that we'll be made whole. There is a bomb from Gilead that can make you whole. And his name is Jesus. Come today.